All right, let's talk about the international response um, to the whole genocide. So following the death of the Belgian peacekeepers, um, instead of bolstering the mission as Dallier, the general in charge of the peacekeeping mission, was recommending, the Belgians just say bye, uh, and they leave the situation. Um, by coincidence, Rwanda was appointed to the United Nations Security Council at this time period, so the member of the UN, that council that actually has the authority to do anything, uh, Rwanda is a part of this. So they know from the start uh, the Belgians are going to withdraw. They know the United States, France, and the United Kingdom, three of the permanent members of the Security Council, are unwilling to do anything, um, and they're unwilling to increase their numbers of troops, so they can really do whatever they want, and Rwandans are well aware, are well aware of this. Um, General Delier and the United Nations peacekeeping mission attend or appear to be helpless. Um, and in reality, they really are helpless. Um, but they still manage to save some lives, which is a testament to the individuals who are left behind and the will of the general. Um, UN peacekeepers are going to pull out foreign nationals and they're going to basically abandon Rwanda. Um, they're going to get the foreigners out of the country, but anyone who is not a foreigner um, is basically going to be left to fend for themselves, and it's going to be very problematic. Um, the uh, leader of the council, Casey, okay, so leader of the United Nations, Buhmu, um, is going to import a personal friend um, to take care of the situation, more or less, who's going to report on the genocide. But he is reporting something completely different than what Dallier is reporting, so there is going to be conflicting information, and this is going to cause a number of issues when it comes to the Security Council actually being able to act on this. There's going to be no official condemnation of the Hutu regime until just before the final victory of the RPF. So basically right until the end when it looks like the RPF is going to win, that is finally when the United Nations is going to condemn the actions. Um, a number of countries are going to be playing a role in the inaction and ultimately take responsibility for the inaction of the international community. Um, and this is going to be done for a number of reasons. But number one is the peacekeeping mission was ultimately a watered down peacekeeping mission. It was understaffed. It was poorly equipped. And they did not have the funding. And they did not have the willpower um, by the major powers in the United Nations in New York to actually get involved and to do anything in the conflict. Uh, it was a lack of political will among the member states, which is really the reason that this whole tragedy happened. Um, and certain countries are going to play a larger role in responsibility than others. Uh, the Belgians are going to be one of those countries that plays a large role because when the peacekeeping mission was formed in 1993, the majority of the troops were uh, were Belgians. Okay, when the Belgian troops were going to be killed, um, they're going to pull out their troops and basically. At this point, the peacekeeping mission is really short on troops. Um, and this is going to also show that the Western nations are unwilling to tolerate casualties. Um, any peacekeeping mission if their soldiers are going to be killed. So if there's a possibility of their soldiers being killed, which has already happened, and the uh, Hutu extremists have shown a willingness to kill um, peacekeepers, countries are unwilling to get involved in the situation. Um, so they're going to send peacekeepers in immediately to get their soldiers out. The French and the Belgians are going to do this to get people and their citizens who are in the country out of the country, but they're really not going to do much else. Um, they're just going to basically go in and show how fast they can get involved, stop situation temporarily, but only for themselves. Okay, so they're going to go in, get the French and the Belgian citizens out of the country, and then they leave. Um, this shows that they really, if they wanted to, had the ability to stop and intervene in the genocide. However, they don't do this. Um, Belgium plays a large role in the Belgium plays a large role in this crisis, uh, particularly when it comes to the lead up. Okay, with the imperialism of Belgium in the past, that is going to play a large role. Now, France is another country that plays a large role, and I've already kind of hinted to this, uh, talking about the plane crash, particularly. Um, especially. Number one is France was openly supporting Harvey Armana from 1990 up until 1993. Um, against the RPF. So they were openly not in favor of the RPF. Um, even at this time when the genocide is happening, it's more than likely that they were still not all in favor of the RPF. Um, they're going to be known as Operation Turquoise. Okay, they're going to come in, um, and this is basically to set up a safe zone for French soldiers um, on the border, and that's going to be about it. Um, this is ultimately going to be significant, though, because it's going to allow Hutu killers, so those who are committing the genocide, to escape into neighboring Zaire, uh, currently the DR. Um, the policy of the French government to support the legitimate Hutu-dominated government um, was done primarily to avoid a military victory and avoid a war um, and to protect that uh, French-speaking part of the country, um, the French-speaking part of Africa. This is the uh, Rwanda is on the border between French-speaking and English-speaking Africa, um, and the French wanted to make sure and maintain that. Uh, France is going to enable the genocide to take place through support of the Hutu regime before, during, and after the killing. Um, 
This is an argument made by one historian. It's important to understand that there is some arguments on either side. Um, I'm not necessarily saying the French are totally responsible for everything, um, but it is important to look at the role the French played in this situation. And we're going to get this operation right through here, Amarilius, um, which is going to dispatch 500 French soldiers to basically get rid of for or get foreign residents. Um, out of the country and the vast majority of them are westerners so basically go in get the westerners out of the country and leave the situation to uh to unfoil however it's going to ultimately unfold um as more evidence is going to come out uh that the uh, in rwanda about the genocide the french foreign minister is going to announce that he's going to be sending troops to the country uh, to stop massacres and promote the populations threatened with extern uh and to protect the populations threatened with extermination. Um, but this is not going to happen until July, okay? Mid-June, uh, mid-June, okay, not July, mid-June is when the French are finally going to step up and do something. Uh, Operation Turquoise, which was uh, in France, when the French finally realized the genocide is actually happening, um, the media is now reporting on the genocide. The French government's role um, in supporting the previous government is going to be questioned. Um, France is not looking good in the international scene, um, and this is when the French are ultimately going to send in troops to protect threatened populations. Now, you can argue why are the French doing this. Um, in all reality, it's basically at this point, it is now politically expedient to do so. The French are looking bad. The French have not been involved in the situation when they really should have been involved in the situation. They were previously protecting the individuals who are now committing the genocide, and this is not good for French. A, France, a major Western power. So when it is politically expedient, the French will launch Operation Turquoise and get involved in the situation. Um, the RPF is going to angrily condemn this initiative um, simply as a ploy by the French to save the tottering Hutu government um, and not really wanting to allow French troops into Kigali because the French um, have previously supported the Hutu. The Hutu are about to lose, and this is what the RPF is saying. Like, you're only doing this um, because it's a way of protecting your own interest in the country because the RPF and the French do not get along. They do not trust each other. So Kagame, the leader of the RPF, is going to basically come in and say, this is just a ploy. I don't buy it. Get out of our country. Um, the intervention is going to cause a lot. Intervention is going to cause a number of issues for the UN peacekeeping um, because they've already been restricted by a um, mandate that's saying what they can and cannot do. Um, the French are seen as humanitarian action, so they're going to be granted wider powers. Um, and basically given the powers that Delier was asking for uh, throughout the crisis and then even before. So at this point, the French are going to come in and basically do everything um, in June and July of 94 that Delier and the UN or a representative from the UN was asking for before the crisis happened, um, which is ultimately, I imagine, very frustrating for Delier. Uh, June 22nd, uh, 2,300 elite French troops are going to land in Gaier, or in Zaire, and they're ultimately going to go into southwest Rwanda, um, deploying heavy equipment, uh, massive firepower, seen um, inconsistent with the humanitarian mission. If it's a humanitarian mission, you're going in to save people's lives. Why do you need a bunch of military equipment and massive firepower? So there's going to be some interesting um, looks by the international community at what's going on. The Hutu government is happily going to allow them to come in. Um, the RTLM is even going to tell Hutu girls to look forward to making French soldiers welcome. Um, you can read into that however you want right through there. Uh, the deployment of French intervention is going to lead to a resurgence by the Hutu of the killing in certain areas. So the Hutu um, extremists are going to start getting getting going pretty much and start doing more killing um, as a result of this. Uh, despite the belief that the entry of France might help his chances, the Hutu government remained on the point to collapse. Um, so they're like, hey, this might be good for us, but they are still close to collapsing. In early July, members of the interim government are going to leave Kigali for the safe zone, um, making uh, most of the government's money with it. Uh, and the leaders of the entire Hamway and much of the remaining army are going to be left um, or come with them as well. On July 4th, Paul Kagame is going to take control of the government, um, announce the formation of new ministers from the previous government um, based off of the Arshura Accords. The French government is going to certainly save the lives of many of the Tutsi, um, as the RPF is going to ultimately make its advance. Um, however, is also going to allow for a number of Hutu killers to escape. Um, Operation Turquoise officially ends August 1994. Um, by then, the RPF had won. The genocide is effectively over. Um, at least the first 100 days have ended. There were still some instances of killing and problems going on, um, but the worst of it is pretty much over by this point. Now, the United States is going to play a large role. Um, they're going to be seen as the country that has the most responsibility for the lack of action in Rwanda um, because of their influence in the world um, and their influence in crises happening in the 20th century. 
uh, and they basically get in and do nothing. Um, there's a lot of political pressure, as I've already stated, on Clinton. Clinton's going to come in on March 25th, 1998, landing in Kigali for a short trip. He's going to issue his apology where he says, like, I've come to pay respect to the nation and all who have suffered and all who have perished in this Rwandan genocide. Um, where Clinton's basically coming in and saying, I screwed up. I could have done more. Um, it could have probably been a larger apology because a whole bunch of people were killed um, that could have been stopped if the United States got involved in this situation. Samantha Power, um, who would later become the United States ambassador to the UN during the Obama administration, is going to be heavily critical of the United States' role um, in the genocide at this time period. When Clinton came into office in 1992, um, the U.S. was concerned with Rwanda, but simply as a way of promoting peace um, and moves towards democracy, which is kind of the uh, issue of the United States in international relations, um, especially at this time, even up until the current day to some extent. Uh, however, the United States is going to show little interest in human rights and ethnic issues. Um, during the Carter administration, the United States government's real role was getting involved in human rights issues. At this point, it's basically promote democracy, promote moves of peace when possible, and how can it benefit the United States? The United States President Clinton is going to issue Presidential Decree uh, Directive 25 PDD 25, which was written basically prevents U.S. forces from going involved in UN uh, missions that are going to go against the foreign policy interests of the United States. So the United States or the United States will give soldiers and give troops to the United Nations peacekeeping missions and P United Nations missions as long as it's going to benefit the foreign interest of the United States. If not, the U.S. will not send troops. Um, if Rwanda is not a priority for the United States, um, it's not going to get involved. OK, that's pretty much all it's going to be saying. Um, the U.S. had the ability to get involved and do something, and they didn't. And that's going to cause a number of different issues. Now, the dance to avoid the G word is important. This is the word of genocide. Um, they're going to avoid using the word genocide because when they use the word genocide, um, it means they have to get involved and do something. And they don't want to get involved. They don't want to do something. So they're going to avoid using the word genocide. Um, Nearly all Americans were evacuated from the country by mid-April. There was, I believe, one or two Americans left, and he was a missionary and chose to stay behind. Um, actually documented a lot of the stuff that happened. We have a lot of good sources as a result of him. Um, United States is basically going to say, hey, we've got all Americans out of the country. This isn't our situation. We're not involved. We're going to focus on problems going on in Haiti because it's closer to the country and Bosnia. Okay? So the former Yugoslavia um, the United States is the United States is going to get involved in those conflicts, but they're not going to really get involved in Rwanda at all. Um, five new countries are going to be named to the Security Council in 1994. Um, towards the end of 1994, they're going to use the word genocide at this point. Um, the Czechs are going to be the first ones to use the word genocide. At this point, the United States pretty much has to step up and do something. Uh, there you go. Questions, comments, put it below. See you later. Good luck.